Hi everybody. Good afternoon. I am Vedna Rainan, um, School of Electrical and Electronics Engineering. Today we are going to discuss about the AD86 addressing modes and its instruction sets. So this is our today's lecture title. We will see in this next one hour. Uh, we will have a recap about AD86. Then we will slowly move on to addressing mode. Then we will be moving to instruction sets. We will cover these topics for the next one. I welcome you all for this class. Hi everybody, good afternoon. I'm Vedna Raina, assistant professor from School of Electrical and Electronics Engineering, Satibama University, Satibama Institute of Science and Technology. Today's lecture, we are going to discuss about AD86 addressing modes and its instruction sets. For the next one hour, we will be dealing about these things in detail. I will be explaining about the basic concepts related to this AD86 addressing modes and AD86 instruction sets. What are the types of instruction sets available? We will have a brief uh, introduction and uh, interactions about these things in today's lecture so the topics to be covered in this lecture is going to be a small recap about 8086 microprocessor that is features of 8086 microprocessor then we will be moving to addressing modes of 8086 how the data is going to be picked from the memory or how the data is going to be stored or transferred or manipulated over the registers and the memory locations the, and for using going for this doing for these kind of operations we need some instructions syntax or program codes and we we are going to discuss about all these instructions related to ad86 microprocessor so today's lecture my ppt presentation will be based on this three things a small recap about the previous chapters introduction and then we'll be slowly moving towards the addressing modes then we will be moving to the instruction sets coming to the introduction part of ad86 already we had discussed about this architecture diagrams has been taken out here in this slide i have given a small schematic representation of the ad86 microprocessor you see ad86 microprocessor ad86 is a 16 bit processor uh, we had studied 8085 it is a 5 bit 8 bit sorry it's a 8 bit processor 8086 is a 16 bit processor and one more thing in 8086 is it has 20 bits 20 bit address plus it also has 16 bit data bus actually this is an extended version of 8086 is an extended version of 8085 processor as I told you earlier, 8085 is a 8 bit processor, 8086 is a 16 bit processor. So, using this 8086 microprocessor, we can able to read or we can able to write a 8 bit data or a 16 bit data to and fro from the memories. We can do this process. The, if you see the architecture, 
the whole architecture of 8086 processor is divided or grouped into two parts. One is bus interface unit, another one is execution unit. Execution unit takes care of all the execution of instructions, all those related jobs. Bus interface unit takes care of those components related to bus interface unit, takes care of fetching of data through the buses, data bus or address bus, that is to and fro from the memories to the processor to, or to the memory. So it, it bus interface unit takes care of all those related operations. So if you see this schematic diagram, we have ALU, arithmetic logic unit, which is the brain of any processor, of course. It is the computing unit where all our arithmetic and uh, related logical operations are going to be performed. We have register arrays. So when talking about 8086 register arrays, we have basically four types of registers available in 8086. One is going to be a general purpose register, as like in 8085 we had discussed. One is going to be a general purpose register, that is accumulator A register, B, C, and D. Since 8086 is a 16-bit register, we are not going to denote it as A, B, C, Ds. We are going to give it as AX, BX, CX, and DX. So we are going to have four general purpose registers. Then we have a separate segment register. This is where 8086 is different from 8085. In 8085, we don't have the segment registers. We have only the basic registers. The advantage of having segment registers is a main thing. While using this 8086 microprocessor, we can store the data while a program is being executed. That is, the program can be separate from the data memory. Program memory is separate from the data memory. So it's very advantageous. It's very advantageous. So th this is the main difference between 8085 and 8086. So we have general purpose registers, we have segment registers, we have pointer, point registers, we have uh, flags associated. If you see the flags, you have uh, around uh, 9 to 10 flags, out of which 6 is going to be status flags. So you have your carry flag, you have your, uh, you have your carry flag, you have your zero flag, sign flag, parity flag, all these flags we call as status flags, okay? And we have a separate three control flags. This is new for 8086. That is trap, TF. We have trap flag, TF, and IF, interrupt flag, and we have DF, directional flag. These three things, IF, DF, TF, is used to control. Especially trap flag is used to check whether the microprocessor is in execution mode or debugging mode. So we have these three control flags and six status flags mainly. And we have a separate timing and control unit. This is as same as our 8085. We have clocks generated. Crystal oscillator is going to generate the clock frequency based on these clock signals only, the whole processor and its slave devices are going to work. We have program counters. We have instruction pointers. So the program counter identifies what is the address, where the program is stored, where the instruction is stored, how to bring all those things. This is what we are going to concentrate on our today's lecture. And we have a separate instruction decoding unit. Using this decoding unit, uh, the assembler, which is going to, the assembler is going to convert the mnemonics. Mnemonics is a middle level language you all of course know it of. It's going to be converted into machine language, zeros and ones, binary representation. So this is a schematic, uh, uh, little bit of recall or intro about 8086. So the major key points is, especially, 8086 comes in two modes. One is minimum mode, that is standalone mode. I have a processor, it works. It communicates with the memory unit, it collects the data, or it sends the data. Or else, maximum mode, it's a separate application where you have group of co-processes available. All these two or three processes can be connected together, and you will be transferring the data between this, controlling these two or three, one access master, the other things access a slave like that, it goes on. So if you see the key features, as I told you earlier, 
AK86 is a 16 bit processor. It has a 16 bit uh, processing ALU mechanisms. It has 20 bit address lines. So, if you see 20 bit address lines, so I can give 1 MB address memory capacity. And this 20 bit address, if you see this address bus, A0 to A15 is multiplexed with D0 to D15, similar to 8085 processor. The remaining A16 to A19 is not multiplexed, so we need address latch enable signal. So to activate this, perfect, A16 to A19. Okay. We don't have, one more uh, important thing here is we don't have the internal clock in 8086. It, 8086 requires 5 volt power supply, okay, and we are having 16 bit I.O. devices, addressable I.O. devices, okay. So, these are a slight uh, recap about our, the difference between 8086 or the special features of 8086 with respect to 8085. So we'll come now come into the our topic addressing modes of 8086. Addressing modes of 8086. If you take a program, so you know what is a program. Program is nothing but set of instructions related to a specific task to complete a specific task written for doing a specific task. So program is nothing but a collection of some instructions or code or syntaxes. Here it is going to be mnemonics. It's going to contain an upcode and it is going to contain an operand. Upcode is nothing but the operational code which tells the microprocessor what should be done. And operand is the data on which this upcode is going to work up. So I'm going to give an instruction to the microprocessor, 8086 microprocessor, telling it that it has to perform this particular job using these data. So this is known as instruction. So if you see this uh, slide, I had given an example, move AX, come over. It is a single instruction. I'm telling to move some from uh, some data to the AX list group of or a combination of these kind of instructions to finish or to do a specific task is known as program okay so program is a set of instructions to solve written to solve a specific task talking about these instructions so in 8086 we have different types of instructions we'll be seeing this all these subdivisions classifications in our coming slides one by one we'll be discussing all these slides so, instruction set is nothing but group of instructions or set of instructions for doing a particular kind of job or task. Okay. So, coming to addressing mode. So, what is addressing mode? As we all know that the data is going to be present in memory location. It is going to load it in some memory locations. The processor has to pick the data. And it has to bring it to the ALU to process the data. Once it has been processed, it has to go back. The data finished, the result has to be stored back into the memory. Or where the user wants to store it, it has to be stored. So how can we, or what are the possible ways a data can be represented in the memory? Or how the memory can be accessed the possible way, the different sequences or the different mechanisms in which the source operand can be operated. The data can be obtained from the source. The data can be taken from the source, operated, and the results can be moved to the specified location. This is known as addressing mode. So we have a lot of subdivisions here. Direct addressing mode, indirect addressing mode, register addressing mode. As we, uh, what we had discussed in 8085, most of the things is here. Um, and 8086 has some special type of addressing modes which is not available in 8085. So if you see this slide, I clearly given every instruction in a program, as I told you now, it has to be operated on some data. So there are different ways to fetch these data. These schemes of fetching this data is known as addressing modes. So these addressing modes tells us whether the memory contains an address location. The data contains an address location, memory location, 
or it contains a direct address. Okay. So what is the purpose of addressing modes? If you see, the main purpose of the addressing mode is to give the flexibility to the user, making the code very simple. Okay, to reduce the number of bits required in the addressing bytes. What these three things? Flexibility, reduction in number of bits representation, and making this in code simpler. What this things means? I have to call a data. I have to fetch a data from a memory location. For that, I should know where the data is placed, where in what memory location it is placed. In as like in 8085, we don't have a general memory locations. We have segments. We have the memory is going to be divided into segments. As I told you in the starting slides, you have special purpose registers, you have segment registers, you have port segment, data segment, extra segment, stack segment. So these segments has to be rightly addressed. So I have to identify, I have to inform my processor that in which of this the data is present or whether the data is a direct data where the processor can directly work upon it. So the addressing mode is nothing but the mechanism in which we inform the processor where the data is placed, how it has to calculate, how the physical address has to be calculated okay whether it is in general purpose register or whether it is in segment register or whether it is in the data segment so we have to identify so these schemes related to this is known as in general as addressing so if you see the classifications broadly 8086 addressing modes has been classified into five groups the first group deals with the addressing modes of register for register and immediate data so how a register access that data whether from register to register it is being moved or a data is directly moved to the register second group is for memory addressing modes for memory then the third group is for io ports since i told you maximum of uh, two or three co processors will be available so we will be using uh, if i'm using an for an application micro microprocessor is used for a specific application we have some devices for example traffic light controller or uh, video something is being connected so we have to access the ivo course so for that how we have to access that thing comes in group three then group four is relative addressing mode and group five is implied addressing course we'll see all these things one by one so this is how in group one addressing modes used for register and immediate data so we have two types of addressing mechanisms in this group. One is register addressing. The second one is immediate addressing. Second group addressing modes for memory data. You have around six types: direct addressing mode, register indirect addressing mode, based addressing mode, index addressing mode, base index addressing mode, string type, string addressing mode. All these things comes in group two. If you consider group three, I will put addressing mechanics. It can be done in only two ways. Plug in, plug out. I will devices connected or not connected. So you have to mention direct addressing or indirect addressing. Okay. The next one is related addressing modes, relative addressing mode. And the last group is implied addressing modes. So we'll see all these groups individually. The first one, group one, register addressing mode. Example here I given us. If you see this example, move CL, comma DH. I'm moving some data from D register to C register, DH. Okay, DH to CL. The source is DH. The destination is CL. So the content, 8-bit content, if I'm giving it as DX, it is a 16-bit, it is DH and DL, high and low. So it's going to be denoting an 8-bit value. So the 8-bit value which is present in DH register is moved to another 8-bit register that is our CL. Very simple. This is the same as like our 8085 register under addressing. So where the source, what is the source data available, which register the source is available, which register the destination I'm going to transfer my data. This is being provided in this register addressing modes. So you see this next category, immediate addressing mode. That first case, we move from one register to another register. Now we are going to move from a direct data 
move directly to a register immediate addressing mode i can use an 8 bit data or a 16 bit data so the first is example is for 8 bit data the second example is for 16 bit data so move bl comma 0 0 8 is a 8 bit data so i'm straight away moving the data 8 bit data to my d register dl d local okay the next one is move a see see the difference that i have given us dl 8 bit here i have given us move ax ax did not 16 bit so it contains ah and al i and low lower order bytes and higher order bytes. so the 16 bit data for example 0 a 9 f this is going to be transferred 0 a separate 9 f separate so this is going to be transferred to the ax 16 bit register ax these kind of mechanisms move dl comma 0 h or move ax comma 0 a 9 f these are not these things comes under the category of immediate addressing modes. The next one is. having a problem and some connection so the next one is so then <coughs> Next addressing mode. So we are having these addressing modes. So we are having stack. So this is for a base index. Of this slide is for base index addressing mode. So for base index addressing mode, we have to calculate the physical address. So the physical address is going to be calculated based on the base address plus offset address we have to check the base address we have to check the base address how this base address is calculated it is provided in the following example bottom example 8912 uh, f011 8912 is the value which i am considered for the segment and f011 is our offset address so offset plus this base address this will be Add it up together. So if you see this, I cannot directly take this 8912. 8912 has to be, the segment has to be, since it is a 16 bit processor, we rotate it left, add one zero, that is it's equivalent to multiplying it with the answer. So you add it 89120 plus 0F01. So the answer will be 98131. So this is known as the absolute address, or the physical address, or the effective address. This is for addressing mode. So coming to the group two categories, direct addressing mode. So if you see the direct addressing mode, I have move BX within square bracket, one, two, three, four H. So in one, two, three, four H, this one, two, three, four H value given between the bracket, it denotes the memory location. Okay, it denotes the memory location. So the instruction copies the Content which is provided in one two three four, it copies the content and it is moved to the register. So sixteen bit data means you will be having it to BX register. If it is a eight bit data, it is going to be BL register. This is direct addressing. The next category is register indirect addressing modes. So here also we have to calculate the effective address. We have to check the BX base, uh, sorry B register, then uh, DIN SI. DI stands for destination index, SI stands for source index. So if you see this example, move CX comma BX. So the effective address are the physical address, the original address. You know that it is a 20 bit address, 8086 is a 20 bit address, but I'm having uh, only 16 bit uh, data lines. 
So this is a one megabyte it can access, but since it is divided into segments, 64K B segments, we have to do this kind of calculations. So effective address has to be calculated. So effective address uh, has to be from calculated from the base address. As I told you in the previous slide, base address is nothing but DS into 16 data segment value. So once you calculate the base address, this will be added with the EA value. So CX is nothing but the machine address or physical address or the effective address. So the next one is base index address. Here you see, I'm using an index. Okay, so BX, the value BX holds a base value of FFT address, 20 bit, that is your physical address. And then we have an offset. So these two has to be added together. So you have to calculate BA first. BA is nothing but the content of data segment value into 16 base 10. So you will be calculating the BA and this BA will be added with BX. So that will be the final memory location address. So since I'm using base register as my physical address and from that I'm adding with my offset. We call this addressing mode as base addressing mode. This next one is index addressing mode. Similar to base, but here we have move CX comma SI. SI is source index plus 0A2H. Now this 8-bit displacement it will be added with the S. Then EA will be calculated. EA or MA will be calculated. Then it will be added up. It will be added up with the final CX. It moves to the, the final data, final added value, resultant value is the location where the data is stored. So SI or DI is used to hold the index value. Okay. So SI plus 0A2 added up together gives you the content from that the data will be picked up and it will be moved to CX register. Then the next one is last one in the second group based index addressing mode. In based index addressing mode the effective address is computed, computed from the sum of base register and then index register. So BX plus SI. If offset is provided, you will be, of course, you will be adding with that offset. So MA is going to be BA, base address plus effective address. Effective address is nothing but base register plus the index register SI plus the offset value given provided. So the next group is string addressing. So this kind of mechanism is used for string operations. So if you see this, we have this effective address. Uh, it is calculated from the source index. Base address is calculated from the data segment. So this base and this effective address gives the final machine address or memory address. Okay. So if my direction flag is bottom two lines of my slide, if you see the direction flag is set to one, then my source index is subtracted by one. Yes, I minus. If the direction flag is reset, it's SI plus one, one value incremented or decremented. So this is how the final destination memory location is calculated for this SYNC addressing mechanism like this one. The next one is group three addressing modes. We have IO ports. So IO direct IO and indirect IO. In direct IO, you have an eight bit port address directly specified in this so if you see this uh, instruction in input okay in comma al comma 09 catch so port address 09 09 is my port address so i'm taking this port address to my register al that is the content of the port address port with the address 09 something is coming to my port some data or signal is coming to my port that is provided in through that the port address the port is identified as 09 so that signal or that data which is coming through that port 09 is moved to the AL register. Indirect mechanisms. So here I've taken the example of DX comma AX. I'm sending something out. So X denotes 16 bit. So I'm having a 16 bit register. So out 16 bit DX comma AX. So the content of AX, okay, the content of AX source 
is moved to the port whose address is specified by DX register. So DX register is a general purpose register. So it contains a 16 bit data. So it goes to the DX register, identify that 16 bit data. Then it moves to that 16 bit data location and it has, it stores the value in that 16 bit data identified by the DX register. The next group is relative addressing mode. In relative addressing mode, the effective address is calculated by specifying the instruction pointer relative to with respect to the instruction pointer with an 8 bit displacement. So, if for example, J is at jump on 0, jump on 0, 0, 8. So, I'm asking to move to 0, 8 location. So, if the 0 flag is set, if the zero flag is one, then I'll be calculating my effective address. The effective address is calculated from the index instruction pointer. Okay. Plus instruct what is the current instruction pointer value? It will be added up with zero. U. Okay. The base address is code segment multiplied by 16. Okay. So now adding this to BA and EA, you get your final memory address. So if uh, zero flag is set, then the jump controls to the new location, which is calculated, new location, which is specified in MA, specified by MA, okay? Okay, coming back to our relative addressing modes. So in this relative addressing mode, if the zero flag is set, then the control is moved to the location, which is identified by memory address MA. MA is calculated by BA plus EA, as I told you earlier. If the zero flag is not set, that is reset, then it moves on to the next issue, instruction as usual. So coming to this group five, group five instructions, implied addressing mode, in implied addressing mode, CLC, clear or halt like that. It CLC stands for clear the carry flag. So what are the value? It is one or zero, it will be made to three. So these are the five groups we have. These are the five different classifications in which we can calculate the address. In a small recap, I will tell you how to calculate the effective address. So effective address, or the physical address is calculated by adding the segment address plus the offset. Offset can be directly provided or it can be indirectly provided. I have a segment address. This segment address has to be rotated left and multiplied by 16 here. Then it will be added with the offset value. The final resultant value will be the physical address or memory address, which, which is the final thing where my data or my address is loaded. I have to fetch from that value or I have to store usually fetching. Okay. So we'll move on to the next category. With this, we complete our addressing modes. We move on to instruction sets of 80, 86 microprocess. Okay, as I told you, instruction set is nothing but group of instructions which 
do some related task okay program is nothing but a combination of instructions or group of instructions for doing a specific task you have in 8086 you have more than you have more than 20000 instructions lot of large number of instructions are available so coming to this classifications of instructions you have data transfer instructions you have arithmetic instructions you have logical instructions you have string manipulation instructions you have process control instructions you have control transfer instructions so data transfer instructions if you take this data transfer instructions so instructions are codes are syntaxes used to inform the microprocessor 8086 microprocessor to transfer data the data transferring can be between the registers or between a register and a memory location or between a register and io ports or vice versa between io ports and memory or memory with io ports okay so those group of instructions are those instructions which help me in transferring the data between memory locations uh, and the registers are classified or brought into this category so here we have two operands one is the source another one is destination source can be a register or it can be a memory location or it can be a immediate data the register uh, destination will be a register or it can be a memory locations so we can have a word or way so you can use a 8-bit register or you can use a 16-bit registers so if you see the classifications what are the instructions grouped in data transfer category so you have move instructions you have exchange instructions you have push instructions you have pop instructions you have in and out instructions lot more instructions are available like this i have shown you here in this slide some examples so if you see this first box move register comma register two or memory comma register one or memory that is move between register two to register two comma register one that is register one is your source register two is your destination from the source register one it gets moved to register two it can be or else memory to memory so move register two comma register one move memory comma register one move mov command move register two comma memory in between memories and registers are vice versa you can have it so register two is going to be the destination register one is going to be the source so from register one the data is moved to register two. okay second category is move register comma data immediate data so move move ax comma 16 bit number so the 16 bit number is immediately moved to ax an example we can consider so move register comma data so data is the source that data is going to be copied to the register or else second category move memory comma data the direct 8 bit or 16 bit data can be moved to the memory locations the third one is exchange operation so exchange it can be between register to register or register to memory so register to register it means exchange x c h g space register this is operand register two comma register one okay from register one the data is moved to register two okay or else register one the data is moved to memory next one is push and pop instructions push pushes the operand top of stack okay so you have push 16 bit register so you have your stack pointer from the stack pointer it is moved. so either push 16 bit register or push memory it can work it like that. same like that pop operations pop instructions so you have pop it pops out the data okay it pops out the data it's used to get a word pop is used to get a word from the top of the stack to the provided location so pop register 16 or pop from the memory locations push is used to pull that put the data into the top of the stack okay coming to this next uh, category of data transfer instructions in and out instructions so you have in register a comma dx okay so dx specifies your 
fourth address. Okay. So dx denotes the fourth address. Or else in comma in ax comma dx. So if it is an 8-bit address, then in al comma 8-bit address. So this, if you see the slides, in is used to transfer the operand from the specified port to the accumulator or to the register. Out instruction, out command is used to transfer the operand or the data from the accumulator to the specified port address. Okay, for dx comma al or dx comma ax. So this is how we use our in and out statements in our 8086 microprocessors. Then, then comes the arithmetic instruction, second category of instruction sets. Arithmetic instructions, you have these things, add, ADC, ADD, subtraction, SUB, subtract with carry, all those things. SUB, SBB, increment, decrement operators, multiplication, division. Multiplication, division, direct commands is not available in our 8085, but here we have in 8086. So if you see this, add, register, comma, register. Add register two comma register one. So some data which is provided in register one, that is my source, it is added with some data which is provided in register two. So register one comma register two, and it is going to be stored in register two. Okay. So if you see this slide, you can clearly identify it. A D C. Okay. Add with register source register plus the second register or memory data from the memory can be added with the register and the data can be stored in the register r is register value added with the memory value and the data can be stored in the memory value adc memory location comma register okay the next thing add add that is ADC is with can add so you have register data register comma data add a comma b okay a register b register some data a l b h like the 8 bit data or a x comma b x so data has to be added with the memory and you can have direct data added to the memory also data direct data added to the memory also so this is with respect to your add commands so if you see this you have a d c s when you are doing this arithmetic operations the flags are affected we have to be clear when we are involving arithmetic operations the flags are affected so when we add two operands the carry flag is going to with the adc the carry flag is affected sign flag zero flag everything gets affected okay when you talk about subtraction operation subtraction same like that as like register i have two data a minus b okay so a value subtracted from b value or else b value subtracted from a value so you use your command SUB command. So it can be a data register to register or register to memory or memory to register. You can perform this subtractions. So here carry flag is used for borrow. In addition, it is carry. Here we use it for we use it as borrow. So all auxiliary carry, carry flag, uh, okay, parity flag, sign flag, zero flag will get changed based on the values which we take for our subtraction. So this side explains. This slide explains the SBB, okay, subtraction with bar. Okay. Two operands are to be subtracted along with the borrow value. Register one minus register two minus the borrow value, which is borrow value will be available in the CF flag. So ne next one is increment and decrement operators. So if you see this increment operator, it's going to either add plus one or decrement means minus one. So increment register or increment memory location, it can look, increment that particular memory location or it can increment the content which is available in the okay. Increment, decrement operation. Next comes the MUL operation, MUL. This is unique for 8086, which is not available in the so here we have two types of mul mul and another one is imul one is for signed unsigned multiplication another one is used for signed multiplications imul is used for signed multiplication by by byte or word byte or word by word okay mul mul command is used for unsigned 
multiplication byte by byte or word by word. So if you see this division command, division register. So you have well you as you know when you perform divide operator you have your quotient and a reminder gets stored. So if I'm using AL AX divided, so in the lower part AL my quotient gets stored. Okay, mod of that value will be having our so div command and IDVI IDIV command is used. So as usual earlier case IDIV is used for signed word by word or byte by byte operation. DIV is used for unsigned operations. The next one is compare. Most probably in all maximum all our uh, applications programs, we use this compare statements widely used and most important statements. So when we use this compare statements, carry flag, zero flag, sign flag, all this gets changed. All these flags gets changed up. So I'm going to compare two values. Compare A comma B. Register one comma register two. If my content which is present in register two is greater than register one, then all my flags, that is my carry flag, zero flag, sign flag, all are reset. If my second register value is less than register two is less than register one, then my zero flag is reset, sign flag and carry flag are set. They are made to one. Zero flag is made to zero. If suppose the two values are equal, register two comma register one both are equal then my zero flag is set. you have to be clear in this thing this is a driver one if the zero flag is one it means the two data provided in your instruction is equivalent data suppose if i'm taking a equal to a b equal to a compare a comma b in that case my zero flag will be one carry flag and sign flag will be equal to zero I can also compare data which is available in memory location with the register. So second box compare register two comma memory. So if the as usual register two is value is greater than the memory content, all three flags carry flag, zero flag, sign flag is reset. If the register two value is less than the memory content value, then carry flag and sign flag is set to one. Zero flag is set to zero. If these two values are equal, then zero flag is going to be one set. The other two flags, carry flag and sign flag, is going to zero. So by checking the status of these flags, by checking the output of these flags, we make decision. The processor makes the decision that the data is equal and data lesser than or greater than all those things. Okay. So between memory to register or register to memory, you can perform these operations. I can even take a direct data if register comma data a comma zero a if the register value as usual if the register if the register data and the direct data is same then zero flag is set the other two flags are reset if the register value is greater than the provided data all three flags are reset if the register value content is lesser than the given data then the carry and sign flags are set zero flag is reset. The same thing take uh, same is common for memory with data operations also. So ar arithmetic operations, you have all these kind of instructions available. Then we move on to the logical instructions. So if you see the logical instructions, you have your und operator, or operator, exclusive R operator. These are common. And we have for 8086, we have test SHR, SH help, shift right, shift left. Rotate right, rotate. So if you see and, and is used for performing and operation bit, bit by byte. Okay. R is used to multiply each bit available in that data or the given byte or word. So and A comma B. So what is the value present in B register? What is the value present in A register? So these values bit by bit it will be added if it is and bit by bit it will be multiplied if it is an r command if you want to have xr exclusive r operation you can use xr command destination and source src denotes source dst dest denotes destination so source register destination register okay so it will be 
these logical operations will be performed between the source and destinations. If you see this test, the explanation for test, uh, test uh, operator is it performs logically and operations and it updates the flags, but it is not going to alter the source and destination. It is not going to alter the source and destination. Without affecting the operands, only the flags are updated if you use test sig. You have your SHR and you have your SHR is shift right, SHL is shift left. Okay. RCL denotes rotate. Okay. Rotate left through the carry. RCL means through the carry with count. Okay. Rotate. RCR means rotate right through the carry. ROL rotate left, ROR rotate right, so, ROR rotate right, rotate right, okay. So then comes the string manipulation instructions. String manipulation instructions are those instructions which are used to do string based operations. So I'm be having a sequence of word or byte it will be moved between registers, it can be copied, it can be scanned, or it can be manipulated. So string manipulations involve string movement, string comparison, string scanning, string loading, storing of string data, all these things involved. And that is a sequence of a word or a byte. Okay. So all these string on operations, since it is also involves move all those things to differentiate, they had provided, they had appended this yes. So every string operation comes with an S. S, R, S, B, R, S, W. Suppose if I'm taking M, O, V, S, move S. Move S, it represents moving a string. S, B represents a string byte. S, W represents a string word. Move S, B. Move M, O, V, S, B. M, O, V, S, W. It, whether it is a string or string byte or string word, you are moving. So by using this string in instructions, the size of the program can be reduced. The instructions or the bit representations can be reduced. So if you see, as I told you earlier, move S command, move S, or move SB, or move S. This instructions moves the data or word or byte. Sorry, it's not a data, it's a string, string data, string type of data from the data segment location to the new location denoted by Yes, it does. Okay. So the next one, REP. REP is nothing but repeat instructions. Repeat REP. Uh, R E P E R E P E Z. Okay. All these things are repeat instructions. So if I am using uh, R E P N E or R E P N E Z, it means I have to repeat that particular instruction until my CX is equal to zero or my zero flag is equal to one. If I'm using a normal R E P E or R E P E Z, then that particular instructions will be repeated until CX is equal to zero or Z of equal to one. R E P is a general uh, uh, repeat instructions till CX is not equal to zero. Till CX is not equal to Zero. Similarly, move S, move S, B, move S, W commands are used to move from one string to another. Okay. Then you have your CMPS, CMPSB, CMPSW. These are used to compare two strings. Compare string, compare string by compare string. SCAS, SCASB, SCASW. These are used to scan. Okay. You are going to scan you are going to scan the string type, string data. So SCAS is used for scanning purposes, okay? Then coming to the process control instructions, the fifth category of instructions, process control instructions. So what is process control instructions? These instructions controls the processor. You can either set the value of a flag or you can reset the value of the flag by that you can take the control away from one location from the current execution to somewhere else 
okay some that specified as you want from main program to subroutine like that or subroutine to the main program these are these kind of process control instructions are also used to synchronize the processor if more than one processor as i told you in the earlier case when we have uh, four processors available to synchronize this one, two or more processors and to transfer the data between two or more processors and to move the data between one processor to the another processor you have to use your process control instructions one so what are the available process control instructions the different process control instructions have been listed here i had listed in this table column okay you have stc stc is nothing but setting the carrier flag so if i give stc it means that what are the value the previous value can be zero or it can be one it becomes one after executing of this stc statement so set carry flag if i want to change the carry flag value i have to use this command stc stc when i give this stc command then automatically carry flag value will be changed to one CLC is used to clear the carrier flag, reset. So STC set, CLC reset. Okay, all these things comes under implied addressing. CMC, CMC is to complement the carrier flag. If already you have a value of one, then the one becomes zero. Suppose you have a value of zero, then it becomes one. So to complement the carry flag value, you use CMC command. STD, STD is to set the direction flag. So direction flag is to move the control from so, uh, main program to sub subroutine like that okay direction flag is moved to, it it helps the processor to move the control from or to take away the control in different direction based on this flag only it is moved on okay so you have to set the direction flag or you have to clear the direction flag for setting the direction flag you have to use your std command for clearing the direction flag you have to use your cld command like that interrupt flag we have interrupt flag okay interrupt flag trap direction direction flag all these three are control flags based on the outputs of these are values present in this three control flags the execution gets changed the processor changes the execution so you have you are sti sti is nothing but the interrupt flag so you will be if you are giving sti it sets if it is equal to one sets the interrupt then enable interrupt is enabled so you can service that the processor services the slave devices something it's going to get in or it is going to transfer the control so it uh, handshake it means some kind of handshaking is taking place between the processor or other connected devices so interrupt enable or interrupt disable so to disable clear the interrupt flag you have to use cli command. okay then the next one is nop nop stands for no operation NOP stands for no operation. Okay. The next one is HALT HLT. This you might have used in 8085 programming labs and the it, it's HALT's the operation. So once you an interrupt is set, the regular operation is stopped. Then the control is moved to the interrupt location. Based on the interrupt locations or interrupt instructions, the control is taken away from our main program. Then you have your wait signal. Wait, it waits for the test signal okay test signal i told you a little bit earlier in the previous slide we discussed about this it performs logically and operation okay lock is used to lock the buses okay when a processor is executing a job i want if you want no more data to be transmitted you want to lock the bus you can use this lock operator this is useful in maximum mode of operation of 8086 then coming to that Control transfer instructions, last uh, set of uh, instructions. Okay, control transfer instructions. Control transfer instructions is used to transfer the control when we are executing. When we are working in the main program, suddenly I want to transfer from the main program to subroutine. Or else from the subroutine, I have to return to the main program. I have to uh, shuffle between the functions. Then for that, you use this control transfer instructions. Okay. So control transfer instructions comes in two categories, Con unconditional transfer, conditional transfer. So you set a condition and if the condition is met, then the, if the condition is met, if the condition is true, satisfied, then the control is moved from your normal execution main program, okay? Or else, then 
it moves on to the if the condition is false it is not met it moves on to the next immediate inspection and the processor works the next immediate inspection unconditional once the unconditional statement is encountered the control moves automatically to the address specified or address given either directly or indirectly address specified at the inspection provide okay j is at 0a okay j is at i'm giving a condition jump on 0 if 0 is set then i'm asking it to move to 0a location if i'm giving just jump 0 a so when it comes it straight away goes to the the control goes to the 0 a location we'll see this in the coming slides one day so conditional statement if it is true then the control is transferred unconditional statement e, no condition is specified automatically the statement is true. so if you see this these are some of the control statements conditional control statements j a jump if above that is if the carry flag is equal to zero and zero flag is equal to zero then the control moves to the location which is specified j a e jump if above or equal if that is that is equal to when the carry flag is zero the control moves j b is jump below j b e is jump below or equal j c is jump on carry j e is jump on equal j n c is not carry no carry not equal j n is that is jump on no zero or not zero j p is for jump if parity is even jp0 is if jump takes place if the parity is odd j is a disk jump on zero so these are some of the instructions conditional transfer instructions we can use in our 80 86 processes coming to unconditional transfer instructions we have call statement we have return statement we have jump statement call is used to for use for calling a subroutine when i call a subroutine the data is saved return address is saved in the stack point the return address is saved in the stack point rat statement is used to return from the subroutine to the main program okay jump it just jumps to the specified address location given in the state okay so now we have discussed about in this today's lecture we have discussed about the different addressing modes and we had discussed about the instance.